I know this is really hard for lots of folks, especially in DC, but what's important to me is to not be, to not be tethered by the partisanship that dominates politics today. And I think Americans are tired of it. I think Arizonans are tired of it. What I'm interested in is working on all those issues that you just mentioned that I care deeply about and that I believe my constituents care deeply about. But I want to work on them in a way that is productive, that is free from the trappings of the pull of the political system. What do you think of her decision and also what you just heard in her interview with Jake? I don't want to spend a whole lot of time uh, on Senator Sinema. She has her reasons. Uh, Donna, I happen to suspect that it's probably a lot to do uh, with politics back in Arizona. I think uh, the Democrats there are not all that enthusiastic about somebody who helps sabotage some of the most important legislation that protects the interests uh, of working families and voting rights and, and so forth. So I think it really has to do with her uh, political aspirations uh, for the future in Arizona. But for us, I think nothing much has changed in terms of the functioning of the U.S. Senate. Does she have the guts to take on powerful special interests? No, she doesn't. She is a corporate Democrat uh, who has, in fact, along with Senator Manchin, sabotaged enormously important legislation. Uh, look, I was surprised she made the, the change, but uh, functionally, I don't think it changes a thing. I think we're uh, going to continue doing the same thing that we were doing, whether she's an independent or part of the Democratic caucus, because she's going to continue to caucus with the Democrats. So we'll still have uh, the committee mm -hmm. uh, structures that we've had before as far as having one more Democrat. And uh, functionally, I don't think it changes a thing. I think the reality is that she's gone from the Green Party when she served in Arizona state legislature to a Democrat to now an independent. So she's getting warmer. But I think the reality is, as you heard the press secretary say, she's voted with the Biden administration roughly 95 percent of the time. And she recognizes that she would have a difficult ch time in a Democrat primary now question will be, does she continue to move and show in the next two years more allegiance with the Republican Party, which I think she will. I don't know if that calculation will work out as well, because I think Republicans will see it as an opportunity to pick up a seat. So I think you'll see legislatively, Republicans will have a block in the House to prevent any more liberal, dem uh, liberal Democrat legislation. The question will be on confirmations. Does she break with the Biden administration on some of their high profile confirmations to show more of her independence in the next two years? I think that's what we should be watching. I think you'll see her align with Republicans more over this time period. She never caucused with the Democrats. She didn't go to caucus. And, and she is she handed them the major majority on committees. So nothing changes in this town. What does change is the politics of Arizona. She is less popular in Arizona than Biden or Trump. And so she's got to find a path forward if she's going to run. That path forward was not in the Democratic caucus. The Democratic Party of, of Arizona has sanctioned her. You see the animosity there over and over again. She's hoping she can get enough, you know, uh, uh, John McCain Republicans and conservative Democrats to form a coalition and, and really frighten, uh, I think, the, the, the Democratic establishment from backing a Democratic candidate.